Hi, so here in Module 2, we're going to extend some of the basics that we had started with, and we're just going to work a little bit with the system.out.print line, compiling our code, and introducing the notion of arguments. So here was our first Java program, the Hello World, that we had from before. So let's review how to compile this application and see what it does. So here we have the Hello World code that we had copied and pasted in, into our text editor. What you'll notice is that some text editors will highlight certain keywords, such as this public class. Um, they will also add these uh, little brackets that basically denote where your braces are for your code to make it a little bit easier to match braces up to know where they are. And in some cases, they will also highlight literals, or in this case, a string, uh, to make it easier to identify. So this is our code. Now what I may want to do is I may want to add in a comment up at the top. Hello world .java is my first code. And I could label anything else that I wanted. And again, this is one style of comment. I could use the bookends style of comments as well. Now, I will need to save this code. So I will come down here to save as. And I have my directory all set up. And I will save it as the same name as the class. Hello world, capitalization is important, .java. And that file has now been saved. Now what I will do is I will go over to my command prompt and basically I will see that the hello world.java code is there. So if I wish to compile this, I will type java c hello world.java, the name of the file. We are compiling the actual file. So when I hit enter, if it comes back with just the prompt, then that means it was successful. If there are any errors, it would tell you that. Now, if by some chance you received an error that says uh, program not found or command not found, that is going to be a class path problem. Uh, there are a couple of easier ways, a couple of ways to deal with that, um, but there is a set of notes on Blackboard that will help you with the uh, class path variable to make sure that that's appropriate. If you're on a Mac, it's not a problem at all. So now I want to run the code, so I will just type Java, and I will type hello world, just the name of the public class. I'm not concerned with any file extensions, because I'm just telling the Java virtual machine what public class I wish to run. And when I hit enter, it says hello world, and your code is run. So now that we've figured out how to uh, create our program, compile it, get it to run, and view the output, now what we want to do is we want to extend this a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to focus on this notion of arguments. And basically what happens is that we want to pass information from the command line into the application and give that information to the application so that it will do something with it. In this case, we have an example here where we want to pass the word James into hello world. And what we would hope for is that the output, the argument we wish to pass in is the word James, and the result of the output would be hello James. This is what we would like it to actually do. So in order to do this, we need to make note of one line of code. In all the code that we've seen, we have this public static void main string bracket bracket arg s. Well, inside that function, inside this main function, the arg s component stands for arguments. Now, technically, it could be any variable. This is actually a variable, but we like to, it's pretty much best practice to just keep it as args, args s or args. Uh, the main function will basically create a set, which we'll call an array, of arguments. So we can pass in any number of these, what we would call strings. The arguments will always start with the number zero. So therefore, if we wanted to use that James argument that we passed in, we would reference it as arg s bracket zero, or the zeroth argument in the series of uh, things that were passed in. So again, it will be the first piece of text after the name of the code or the name of our program from before. So basically we could also use this to print out multiple arguments. Let's say we wish to output three names, James, Earl, and Jones. We could do this by using three print line functions and referencing the three arguments of the 0, the 1, and the 2, such as below. We'd say system.out.println or print line args bracket zero and then do it again args bracket one and args bracket two and each one would reference James would reference the zero Earl is referenced by the one and Jones is referenced by the two in your sample code directory you'll see a program called use arguments this code gets one argument from the command line and weaves it between two other statements so you'll see here where we have the main function we have hi then it arg zero and then we say how are you Notice we use print instead of print line. Print line actually moves the cursor to the next line or creates a new line, whereas print will keep the cursor on the same line. So by doing the two prints first, it will keep it on the same line, follow up with how are you, and then take you to the next line. So all of the items will appear on the same line. 
So get the sample code running in the module, make sure you understand how the code works, then proceed to the module exercises to earn the points. When you complete the module exercises and have completed the quiz, the next module will open up. The quiz has unlimited attempts, so if you don't get four out of five, you can keep retaking it as long as you like. Good luck, and we'll see you for module three.